Hello everyone, Helen here. Hope you're doing okay. Thanks for dropping by to spend a bit of your time with me again. Uh, so, uh, what have I got for you today? Well, I'm going to chat a bit about my 100 day project so far. As I record this, we're about six days in. And I'm going to chat a, about one of my just little short local walks that I went on recently and I'm going to do a bit of chat about bullet journaling and then we're going to finish off by going into the kitchen to make something. So sit back, relax and I'll sit here and chat away to you. So 100 day project first. I've been having such a lovely time doing it although I can say that six days in, I do think it's going to get tricky later on to keep thinking of leaves. I'm, I'm really, really interested to see how I keep coming up with, with new new leaves. Uh, but I just thought I'd show you the, the first few leaves that I've done, if you haven't seen them on Instagram especially, but, you know, I can on my podcast I can also chat about them a bit as well, can't I? So the leaf that I did for day one was uh, just a, a, a simple knitted oak leaf, which uh, I got the pattern from a book called 100 Flowers to Knit and Crochet, I think it's called. Um, and yeah, I did it as the pattern said. I think it looks really nice. I like those three colours that I chose. I think they look quite nice together. So, and on the second day, which uh, happened to be the 14th of February, and I'm, I'm not actually one for celebrating Valentine's Day, but I came across a leaf, or it sprang out at me while I was out, a heart-shaped leaf, and I thought, oh, I think I'll draw that one today, I'll have a go at drawing it. So I had a go, I drew it in pencil first, and thought I would outline it in the fine black pen that I like to use and and then give it a bit of colour with with coloured pencils just a couple, couple of colours of coloured pencils I wasn't trying to make it look like a photograph of a leaf just my interpretation of a leaf uh, for day three for some reason or other I thought about washi tapes maybe I just saw a couple left out on my table and thought I wonder if I could make a leaf with with those so that is what I did I chose a few different patterns and uh, but also colours that I thought would look nice together and I'm really quite pleased with how effective that looks yeah I was quite quite happy with that one so for day four I thought I would just do a very simple crochet leaf and this is a free pattern that I got from the Attic24 uh, website using this chunky yarn that I had variegated I think it's called Stylecraft Carnival. I'm not sure if it's still available. Um, and I just thought it was really effective how those, those colours came out. It's actually rather, rather nice for a simple crochet leaf. And then for day five, well, I got the idea for day fives when I was busy tidying up after doing the crochet leaf because I had a few ends that I, you know, snipped off after I'd woven them in and thought, oh, I could use those to make a leaf. So I cut out a cardboard leaf shape and just, yeah, had fun with the glue and uh, and sticking the bits of yarn on. Um, and I'm very pleased with how that one turned out. I don't know if that's maybe my favourite one so far. And then finally, uh, my uh, sixth one is a felt leaf. I just... I cut out, a, actually I, did, I drew a, a leaf shape on paper first and then used it as a pattern to draw around and then attempted to do some back stitch. It's not the neatest back stitch ever, but then things in nature are I mean, they're often wibbly wobbly, aren't they? So anyway, hopefully I shall improve because I think I will probably do some more leaves made out of felt and um you know, maybe do some different embroidery stitches on. So yeah, so that so there we are. That's my six six leaves so far, and I just I, I really love the idea that I'm 
using something so commonplace as a leaf um, and just trying to do something different with it every day. So yeah, it's really lovely. And, and talking about appreciating simple things, I was I go I go out for a walk most days and I I, I just go out for fresh air and a bit of exercise. I don't have a dog, so there's nothing forcing me to go out outside. I just you know I know that I need to get out, and I love being out when I'm there. But sometimes I can be put off going out. And the other day it was absolutely pouring with rain, and I thought I uh -huh, don't know whether I'll go out. Um, and I thought, well, you know, I shouldn't like, give myself a bit of a talking to. I shouldn't just make excuses like this, should I? I need to go out to get a bit of exercise. So I thought, well, what would I tell somebody else? Uh, well, if somebody else said to me, oh, I don't know whether to go out in the rain, I would say, well, why don't you just look at the positive side of it, apart from the benefits of being out? Why don't you just go and enjoy the rain? So I thought, well, yeah, when I was a child, I like most children, I absolutely loved being out in the rain. It was great to go and splash in puddles and just generally get wet and come back home and, you know, get nice and dry again. So I went out with a really positive attitude. I had my waterproofs on and everything. And I just had such a lovely walk. And I would say I was probably out for longer than usual because I was just looking at things and enjoying them so much. And... Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I just was wandering along and watching the raindrops falling in the puddles. And then I became really fascinated with the little droplets of water, <coughs> excuse me, that, that you see hanging from uh, branches and leaves and all sorts of other things outside. And so I thought, oh, I'll take a few little bits of video and, and, and share it with you. So, so that's what I'm going to show you next. Uh, I just stitched together a few of these little bits of video and accompanying it with a bit of piano, which is just a tune of mine. It's just an improvisation. It's not anything that I've even composed and written down. It's just some gentle, very simple piano music, which I thought was appropriate for going out in the rain. So come on with me out into the rain and appreciate the little things. bit of a chat with you again about bullet journaling. Uh, it was a few podcasts ago wasn't it? I was just showing you what I'd been using my bullet journal for this year so far. 
so I thought you just might be interested to see see how things are going. Uh, one of the things that I showed you was um, uh, a page to encourage me to read some of the books that have been on my bookshelves for quite a long time and I decided to make myself a, a tracker to with a little square to colour in each day um, because as as you might remember I, I read a no, I listened to a lot of audiobooks last year, far more than books I've actually read. And I love audiobooks, uh, but it is a very different experience from to reading a book and having a book in your hand. And I do love reading, and I just wasn't really making the time for it. I got out, out, out of the habit. Well, not completely, but, you know, really out of the habit, so I wasn't reading every day. And my tracker is working really well. And... As you'll see, uh, I've mostly read for more than 30 minutes. So I, I get I just tell myself I only have to read for 10 minutes and that, that way it means I will pick up a book if I think, oh, I haven't really got time to read. I'll pick it up and I'll read for about 10 minutes. Uh, but I mean, as you'll see, I've, I've, you know, I've only done that a couple of times. Most of the time I've read for at least 20 minutes, if not 30 or more. So I'm quite pleased with how that's going just a little way of encouraging me and I make it very easy for myself and I think that's one of the things to bear in mind when you're bullet journaling that if you have every time you want to do your bullet journal if you have to gather things from all around the place uh, it can be a bit off-putting so I have got everything to hand so I'm very lucky that I have my craft room here and that I have a table that nobody else uses and I can just come in and sit down. And when I sit down at that table, everything is handy. I can just reach to one side for my bullet journal or whatever notebook I want. And my pencil sort of hand and pens and everything that I need is there ready. So that's, it's definitely a good tip is to have everything easily to hand. Uh, so, yes. And oh, another thing that I'm, I meant to mentioned last, last time I was talking about bullet journaling was that I find these, these sticky tabs that you can add to pages are really, really useful. Uh, I've used them for a few years and they're, they're reusable. I've transferred them from one bullet journal to the next because some of them obviously, you know, say walks or uh, the, I keep the place for where this month's calendar is and things like that. Uh, I ha did actually treat myself to some new ones this year because they were getting quite tatty. Um, but they're, you know, they're removable and I think they're made by post-it, post-it notes. Um, so re really, really handy for getting straight to the right page. Again, it makes it quicker um, for me to get things done. So I come back in from my walk, I pick up my bullet journal, I go straight to the page where I'm recording walks and there, we're, we're done. Uh, another thing I've done since, oh, well, a thing I have done since you last saw my bullet journal was just a page thinking about the word soft. Because um, if you remember, I was saying that to ease yourself gently into the year, you could be soft on yourself and not soft in, in a bad way, but just in a gentle way. So I just uh, thought I would put together all, all the quotes I'd found which have got the word soft or softly in and I had a lovely time colouring and drawing little clouds and things and that was just a relaxation activity I mean okay I don't, don't need to do that kind of thing to um, to be productive or whatever but it was just a really lovely way of spending the time. Uh, I've got a page to record um, what I did on the uh, big garden bird watch this year it's an annual event so on one weekend of the year you spend an hour uh, bird watching basically out of your window usually into your garden and so I did that and recorded all the birds that I saw and and then you enter the information onto the RSPB website and they compile all the information <clears throat> to see what how the bird population is doing from year to year so I really enjoyed doing that I've got a um, just record of a walk that I went on uh, during January or end of January, which actually I haven't shown you yet. I did a bit of video of it and I haven't shown you that one yet. So no doubt you will see that one um, soon at least. And I stuck in the postcard um, that came with my prize of yarn that I won from Angela of Yarn and Yarns. 
and she'd written me a note on the back of there and I uh, thought that was a nice memory to have. And then finally, I have done myself a double page spread to keep a record of my 100 day project. I didn't, it didn't take me too long to do that. And, and now it's lovely coming to that page um, each day and colouring in my little leaf and just put a little bit of a detail of, of what, you know, how I've done the leaf on that day. So I think that'll be great to look at when it's all finished. So um, I'm just going to chat a bit more about bullet journaling and show you a whole load of quotes, which I hope that's OK. I'm just going to talk about some different quotes that I found. And they're all quotes by somebody called Ryder Carroll, who is supposedly the person who first came up with the idea of a bullet journal. So I think, I mean, the, for many years, there's been planners and you know various ways of organising your life. In, on paper but he was the one I think who coined the phrase bullet journal and he's written a book about it which I don't have but um, I was quite interested in a lot of the quotes from the book that I came across so it just set me thinking and I thought I would share my thoughts on these different quotes with you and that there might be something that uh, is helpful or interesting to you. So the first quote is this, the power of the bullet journal is that it becomes whatever you want it to be or need it to be, regardless of what season you are in. So although I do occasionally look for ideas from other bullet journalers, um, the most useful or interesting things in my bullet journal are those which have sprung from a need that I've had or from, you know, from keeping a record of activities or events that are personal and meaningful to me. An easy place to start with any endeavour is simply taking your thoughts out of your head and organising them on paper. So the main thing that I'd say to anyone thinking of starting a bullet journal is not to be put off by seeing some of the really posh, pristine pages that you see some bullet journalers doing. I mean, some of them are absolutely um, beautiful. Um, but, you know, you it's not a standard that you have to set yourself at all. In the first place, you can just get stuff down on a page without even trying to make it look colourful or pretty. Although I think an easy first step is just to write using different coloured pens and then maybe add the odd sticker or piece of washi tape, you know, and it might snowball from there or it might not. The blank pages of your notebook offer a safe playground for your mind where you're completely free to express yourself without judgment or expectation. So unless you're actually planning to show your bullet journal to other people, your notebook should definitely feel like a safe, private place where you can try things out without fearing that anyone is going to come along and criticise. The bullet journal will help you declutter your packed mind so you can finally examine your thoughts from an objective distance. So whenever your mind's feeling a bit cluttered with too many lists and thoughts tumbling about, then getting those thoughts down on paper is such a great way of beginning to sort out what's in your head. You can then take a step back um, and take a more measured look at how to move forward. It's part organisation, part soul searching, part dream weaving. Well, I think that's a lovely description of what a bullet journal can be. But remember, your bullet journal can be anything you want it to be. Um, it provided me with a practical yet forgiving tool to organise my impatient mind. Well, my bullet journal is a very practical way of preventing my mind from becoming overwhelmed with all the tasks and activities that I want or need to do. But if something doesn't work out, it doesn't matter. No one's marking me on whether what I write in my bullet journal is successful. It teaches me something and I move on. And I like the fact that it sometimes stops me from rushing into things without giving them due consideration. Just the fact that it takes a little time to write down the lists or intentions or targets means that it slows me right down and it makes me think more carefully about things. Mindfulness is the process of waking up to see what's right in front of us. It helps you become more aware of where you are, who you are and what you want. 
So keeping a bullet journal definitely helps me to live more mindfully. Sometimes what I write on a page might seem a very obvious statement about something, about some aspect of my life or my intentions, but these simple aspects can easily be lost or hidden or overlooked in the normal hustle and bustle of life. And writing these simple things down can help me to see what should have been in plain view, but which I was maybe too hasty to actually notice. It's not about living a perfect life, an easy life, or getting things right all the time. It's not even about being happy, although joy often greets you along this path. It's about penning a story that you believe in and that you can be proud of. So I think that keeping a bullet journal can be great for boosting your self-esteem. Um, I think this is especially true when I'm coming to the end of a, bu of a bullet journal and I flip through it. I'm always surprised at how many things I've done or achieved or tried and learned from mistakes. And because my bullet journal is my safe place, I can allow myself to feel proud of myself without the need to shout it out loud. My bullet journal just speaks for itself. So yeah, quite a few thoughts there. I could say lots more about bullet journaling and probably will in the future, but I think that's probably enough for today. So I think it's time to go into the kitchen now. And today I'm gonna to make some scones and not the kind of scones that you cook in the oven, but uh, ones that you cook on a girdle or griddle, which is a, uh, Mine is a very heavy cast iron pan with very shallow lip around the edge and it's flat. So I call that a girdle. Um, uh, I think it's quite often they're called griddles. Although in my mind, a griddle is a pan which has got raised lines on it so that whatever you cook on it kind of has lines on it. I don't know. I haven't looked up the definition anyway. And there's lots and lots of regional variations of this scone. Uh, what I'm going to make is is um, comes from the northeast, and uh, there are scones very similar, which are maybe Welsh cakes. Um, in Scotland, I think there's a scone called a fatty cutty, um, and in Lancashire, there's a singing lily, I think. And anyway, so what I'm going to make are called singing hinnies. And hinny is a, a local pronunciation of the term of endearment, honey. And they're called singing hinnies because it is said that sometimes when you put them onto the girdle to, uh, to bake, um, you can hear, as well as the sizzling sound, you can hear a sort of high pitched singing sound. It's never done that for me when I've made them, but you know, maybe it happens, I don't know. Um, uh, the recipes have been around for a very long time. It was um, traditionally uh, used in some mining communities for the miners to take as part of their, their uh, food that they took with them to work. And there's somebody called John Brockett uh, made a glossary of northern terms and things uh, in, I think it was 1825, and singing hinny is there, in there, and the the thing that he wrote was um, that uh, singing hinny is a kneaded spice cake baked on the girdle, indispensable in a Pitman's family. So I don't know why it's called a spice cake because I haven't come across any recipes with spices in them. Anyway, but they, they just have very very basic ingredients, but they taste really nice. Uh, you can eat them warm or cold. Definitely best warm, I think, um, but they're just just really, really lovely. So come along with me to the kitchen and we'll make singing hinnies.
Well, it is definitely time for me to say goodbye to you now. I've rattled on about all sorts of things today, haven't I? Um, anyway, um, thanks for spending your time with me if you've if you've stayed through all of that uh, chattering. And until I see you again, take great care of yourself, keep nice and busy, and I will be back again very soon. Okay then, bye!